Welcome back to our third video tutorial where we are looking at how we can modify lists in Python. In the first part of today's video, we are going to try and determine the length of this shopping list or work out how many items are in it. Now, I know you can just look at that list and pick up that there's three items in our shopping list, but we're going to get the computer to work it out for itself. So we do that quite easily by using a keyword called len, L-E-N. So I'll just show you what that, how that um, works in code. First of all, we're going to print, and in brackets, we're going to print the LEN, or the length, and then in brackets again, we'll write shopping list, and then we'll close off two sets of brackets at the end of that line. So let me explain that to you. What we're going to do is we're going to print a message on the screen that shows the length of the variable shopping list. That's all that line of code is saying. So it looks at the shopping list, counts the items 1, 2, 3, and we'll print that number onto the screen. So I'm going to save it and run it, and you will see that you get the number three down here. Okay, let's just add another item to our list up here, just to make sure that it is counting correctly. So I'm going to add chocolate back into the shopping list and run that code again. And you can see we've now got four items. All right, so that's working well. What I'm going to do, though, I'm going to make that print statement here. I'm going to make this line a little bit more meaningful. Okay, I'm going to delete what I've got there for now, and I'm going to put it into a full sentence. So I'm going to start by saying, there are, and I'm closing my quotation marks and putting a comma, and now I'm just going to do that length formula by typing in len, and in brackets shopping list, so that will just add in the list, uh, sorry, the length of the shopping list. Then I'll put another comma, and I'm just going to write items on the shopping list inside of quotation marks. Okay, so now that line's going to say there are four items on the shopping list. Okay, so let's save it, run it. There are four items on the shopping list. That looks a lot nicer than just printing out the single digit by itself. Okay, so that's how we determine the length of a list. The last thing I'm going to show you now with the list is how we can actually check on this list to see if there's a particular item already on it. So let's just delete what we've put in there. And what we're going to do is we're going to ask the user what item they would like to check on. So, right, input equals, actually not input equals, input, and then we write what item would you like to check on. Okay, and the answer that the user types in here will need to be stored in a variable. So let's go back to the start of that line and Right, item, so that can be our variable name. Item is equal to what item the user would like to check on. Okay, once we've got that item stored away, we can then run an if statement to find out if that item is on our list or not. So, we're going to write if item, so we're going back to this item that the user just typed in, if that item is in shopping list, we put a colon, and we tell the computer what to do. So we're going to print a line that says, yes, that item is on the shopping list. Oops. Okay, and then we need to also tell the computer what to do if that item is not on the shopping list. So we need to go back over on the left-hand side of our page so there's no indent, and we write else, put a colon, and we're going to print another message just saying, no, oops, no, that item is not on the shopping list. All right, let's save it. Let's run it. Let's check on it. Let's see if we've got apples on the shopping list. It says, yes, that item is on the shopping list. Let's run the code again, and we'll see if we've got bread on the shopping list. It says, no, that item is not on the shopping list. All right. If you want to get a little bit more fancy and make your um, responses to the user a little bit more meaningful, what you can do, instead of writing that item, let's change it up. Okay, I'm going to actually close the quotation marks after yes, and I'm going to put plus item, and then write plus after that, and open up the quotation marks again. So what that's going to do now it's going to say, yes, whatever particular item the user typed in is on the shopping list. Okay, I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put it down here. 
So no item is not on the shopping list. So when I save it and run that now, if I check on apples again, it will say yes, apples is on the shopping list. Okay, I know it's not the perfect literacy there, it should be apples are on the shopping list, but close enough, there's nothing you can really do about that. If we run it again and search for bread, it says no, bread is not on the shopping list. So that's another way you can add a bit more meaning to the answers that the um, computer is printing out to the user. So I'm going to stop the video here. I'm going to come back in one final video that's going to put all of those little skills we've learned in the last three tutorials together into one big shopping list app. Okay, so I'll catch you in that video.